Gaming has never been as expensive as it is right now. Yeah, somehow it has never been more accessible. Yeah, that contradiction is exactly why AI and cloud gaming matter so much in 2026. Because for a growing number of people, traditional gaming is starting to feel pretty much out of reach. Think about what gaming looks like right now. Consoles are essentially stagnant, and I mean PS5, Xbox, and a Nintendo Switch. Gaming pieces are extremely expensive, and GPUs alone can now cost more than the entire setup used to. That's wild. Every year, the barrier to entry keeps getting higher. Now, if you find that you have limited time, limited space, or a limited budget, gaming starts to feel less like entertainment and more like a financial decision. And that is the real problem. Not that gaming is bad, but that it is slowly pricing people out. Games are also starting to become more demanding than ever. I'm talking higher resolutions, bigger worlds, more advanced lighting and effects. At the same time, most people are not gaming more. They're gaming differently. Shorter sessions, more flexible setups, and gaming that essentially needs to fit around life and not the other way around. Now, there's a growing mismatch between where hardware pricing is going and how people actually play games. And that mismatch is forcing an evolution. Now, this is where AI and cloud gaming quietly steps in. Not as replacements for high-end hardware, but essentially as bridges. AI is making weaker hardware feel far more capable. And cloud gaming, on the other hand, is making expensive hardware optional. Together, these two things are changing who gaming is actually for. You no longer need the fastest GPU in order to enjoy modern AAA titles. And in some cases, you do not even need local hardware at all. At CES 2026, I was invited to check out NVIDIA's GeForce Now running across a wide range of setups. I saw it running smoothly on ultra-wide monitors, on the Legion Go 2, on a 4K gaming TV, and even on Asus's new 5K monitor. What stood out was not just that it worked, it was how adaptable it was. NVIDIA was demonstrating dynamic multi-frame generation in real time. Instead of locking performance to a fixed target, frame generation adapted based on the resolution, the refresh rate, and even what was happening on the screen during different scenarios. The number of generated frames could scale up or down depending on what the display actually needs at the moment. That kind of flexibility changes how performance is delivered. I mean, fully changes it. What really changes the value equation here though is not just cloud gaming. It's how AI is being used across the entire stack. On the NVIDIA side, technologies like DLSS 4.5 and dynamic multi-frame generation allow performance to scale intelligently based on the display, the resolution, and what is happening on the screen. Now, instead of brute force in frames, AI adapts in real time. But this shift is not exclusive to NVIDIA. AMD is approaching AI frame generation differently, especially in handhelds and lower power devices. Their focus is on performance per watt, efficiency, and stability. And that matters a whole lot in handheld gaming. If you know, you know. When battery life and thermal limits are real constraints, AI-assisted frame generation becomes less about peak performance and all about smoothness, consistency, and efficiency. That, my friends, is exactly why modern AMD-powered handhelds can deliver surprisingly playable experiences in games that would normally overwhelm that class of hardware. The common thread here is not brand. It is the approach. AI allows performance to scale based on context, not just raw power. And that is why budget gaming is no longer a compromise. This shift is not just happening on show floors. I experienced this firsthand on my flight back from CES. While I was in the air with around 120 to 200 megabits of internet, I used Xbox Game Pass cloud streaming to play Assassin's Creed, which to be honest, blew my mind that it even ran at all. And this is not a tech demo. It was an actual gaming session. It was smooth, it was playable, and far better than most people would expect cloud gaming to be in those conditions. I was using the ROG Xbox Ally X, and because most of the heavy lifting was happening in the cloud, the battery lasted much longer than I anticipated. And that's huge for these handheld devices. That was the moment it really clicked for me. This is not theory anymore, y'all. This thing is happening. Once I got back home, I decided to test out cloud gaming some more across multiple devices. I'm talking a MacBook, a mobile phone, a handheld, a 4K TV, and anything I could pretty much get my hands on. Xbox Cloud Gaming held up consistently across all of these different devices. And that just means you can access your games anywhere and anytime. I got no fan noise, no heat, no hardware limitations, 
it just worked. Now at CES, I also saw Amazon TV gameplay powered by the GeForce Now app. And gaming was pretty much running directly through the TV software, the TV's interface. No console, no PC, no handheld, nothing attached to it, directly off of the TV. That same idea applies to devices like the PlayStation Portal. With a solid home Wi-Fi setup, it works extremely well as a standalone cloud-focused gaming device. It wasn't always like that, but they've made it so you can now game with just the Portal. It turns gaming into something you can move around your home without thinking about where your hardware lives. And that alone is a good enough reason to consider cloud gaming. Now, this is not about hype or trends. It's about how people actually play games. Busy adults, shared living spaces, people gaming from couches, underpowered laptops, and handheld devices are all going to love this. AI upscaling, frame generation, and cloud streaming are not just technical features. They're accessibility tools that's going to make gaming into the future much easier. They let more people play without constantly asking them to spend more. If you love building PCs, tweaking settings, and chasing maximum performance, <laughs> that experience still exists. I'm not saying you have to replace that or throw that in the garbage, but if you just want to enjoy games without turning every upgrade into a financial decision, this evolution matters. Trust me. I'm gonna say this again. This is not replacing traditional gaming. It is becoming a new pillar alongside it. High-end hardware will always exist, and whoever wants that can still go ahead and do that. But AI power performance and cloud access are reshaping how most people actually play and open the door to just about anybody. Gaming is changing, not because performance does not matter, but because access, flexibility, and value matter more now than ever. Let's talk about where this is all going down in the comment section below. I appreciate you for watching if you made it to this point. Catch you guys in my next video. It's Tommy, and I'm out, y'all.